एवरीवन वेलकम टू द ऑटोडेस्क वेबिनार ऑन शॉर्टकिन सेवन एंड आर वी सेवन वी थैंक यू फॉर मेकिंग टाइम टू अटेंड द सेशन यू कैन पोस्ट योर क्वेश्चंस इन द चैट बॉक्स थ्रू आउट द प्रेजेंटेशन द क्वेश्चन वुड बी आंसर्ड ड्यूरिंग द क्यू एन ए सेशन पोस्ट द प्रेजेंटेशन अ प्रेजेंट फॉर टूडे इज एंड्रू लॉरेंस प्रोडक्ट सपोर्ट स्पेशलिस्ट शॉर्ट गन फ्रॉम ऑटोडेस्क हु शाल गिव अज a brief introduction on shotgun 7 what's new in shotgun 7 and advanced cut features once again we would like to thank you for making time to attend the session over to you andrew all righty hello everyone thank you for joining so we are looking at shotgun 7 today my name is andrew lawrence i am from our shotgun support team based out of London, so nice and early in the morning for us here. Um, any problems with viewing screens, uh, audio, please uh, let me know. Um, but otherwise, what we are going to do today is have a quick uh, little presentation about Shotgun 7. We're going to dive onto a Shotgun site to have a look at what some of the new features are, and we are going to have time for questions and answers afterwards. So thank you once again for coming, if that all sounds good. Uh, we are going to jump straight in. So everyone should be seeing a lovely what's new slide and what is new. So what we uh, we had a big major release uh, at SIGGRAPH, um, which was just over um, one or two months ago, and it was Shotgun and RV7. So you've probably seen uh, any of the blog posts. If you have a Shotgun site, you will already be on Shotgun 7. Um, so the yeah, um, and how you can take advantage of it. So what we'll do is the first thing is to have a last major release. Um, features that you guys have probably been using for a while. But just to refresh people's memories, we had a, a big update to our media app, uh, which we call now the global media app because it lives globally on the very top of Shotgun and allows you to uh, view all of your media in one place. We had some updates to our client review site, which is an online portal for sharing versions and media with people outside of your shopping studio, outside of your uh, shopping site. Uh, we added a, a nice update to uh, make it a bit more user friendly. Uh, uh, and which has added to applications like our Review Notes app, um, which was overdue for an update um, and had some nice UI refreshes and new features added, various other sort of tweaks and fixes uh, here and there. But post uh, previous release was all about sort of managing media, global review, uh, client review. And we're sort of continuing that trend of review uh, with our next major release, which is Shotgun 7. So what is Shotgun 7 all about? Well, unlike past releases where we would have a lot of little features here and there, our pretty much the main focus of Shotgun 7 is around editorial support. Uh, so people on the webinar, maybe you're a supervisor, maybe you're an artist, maybe you're in production. Um, and what we really wanted to focus on with Shotgun 7 was editorial. Now, editorial is a department that didn't get much love in previous Shotgun versions, unfortunately. And so this is sort of long overdue. What do I mean by that? Well. Previously, and you know, you probably all know Shotgun as being something that tracks your shots and your assets. And those are just individual items, um, but they fall into, you know, in the grand scheme, in the grand scheme of things, shots and assets will usually always go into some sort of edit. If it's a commercial, it will go into a commercial. If it's a movie, it might go into a trailer. Even in games, it might go into cinematics. So all of these items are strung together to form this bigger picture, and that's what editorial does. Editorial uh, looks after everything that's coming in and you know, cuts that come in, make sure, make sure everything's in check. As the shots have been rendered, they put them back in the cut, they make sure everything is um, is correct. So obviously a big emphasis on film and, and you know, commercials because you know, we all use cuts. Um, but obviously in games as well, cinematics will always have, you know, it's essentially like mini cuts and edits and things like that. So what, uh, what we had in the past was uh, Shotgun was good at dealing with individual items of shots and assets, but it wasn't very good at putting them together into the bigger picture. And this is uh, what we've done with cut support, so we'll look at some of these features now. So um, we have this brand new feature set called cut support, which we're really pleased with. 
The first thing we've done, uh, if you see on the left, we have updated our uh, existing toolkit apps to work with this new feature set. Uh, for those who don't know, we have something called, we have applications which we call toolkit applications that integrate with third-party apps. So you can see here we've got Flame, Hero, Nuke Studio, and these are editorial tools. So we've updated them to allow, um, when you publish out of Flame or you publish out of Nuke Studio, it will use this new cut uh, schema. So in the middle, uh, we have ability to browse and manage cut data in the media app, uh, and we'll see some live demos of this uh, soon. And then on the right, uh, we have the ability to view our cuts in the web and on our desktop with RV. And this is what we're really, really, really happy with, um, which is that previously in Shotgun, you could review shots, um, but you're only looking at single shots. Now, in our previous integration called Screening Room, which some of you are familiar with, we did have ability to play cuts, but it wasn't that fleshed out. Uh, one of the problems we ran into is, let's say you have a shot that is used frames 0 to 100 in the, sh in, the, in the cut, but then in the trailer you're using a much longer range. And previously we didn't have a way to track two sets of editorial information. And this is something that we've addressed with cut support. We're now very pleased to be able to play cuts in the web and on the desktop without needing to go into some complex screening room and have someone actually assemble an entire edit. So. Uh, let's actually have a look at some of that stuff. <clears throat> so this is our uh, media app, and you'll notice we have a new section called Cuts. So this is a cut for a sequence for a show. So I can say Play Cut in my browser, or RV. You'll notice it's a bit of a refreshed interface. I've got a cut tray along the bottom, and it's playing my shots in cut context, which is fantastic. You'll notice the uh, notes pane on the right is still the same, but this new Cuts tray along the bottom is really where we sort of um, is really helpful. Uh, you can see I've got the option to play an entire cut or a mini cut, and we'll have a look at what that looks like. So how do we, I'm just going to pause here for a second, how do we actually get this cut information into Shotgun? Uh, that is obviously a big hassle for editorial departments, which is they get an EDL if they're lucky. <laughs> from production, they might get an EDL and they have to somehow pass all this information and make it available to the artists. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've made an application that will do that for you. And it's something that we're quite proud of called the uh, Import Cut app. So what you can do uh, from your cuts page, you can say new cut, and then it will ask you to import cut with RV7. Now, it's an application that lives within RV7, so if you're already in the Shotgun RV workflow, this will be available to you. But what we're presented with is a window that says drag and drop EDL and movie. Now, what's very common in uh, editorial is that you will receive a what we call a cut reference, which is a base layer movie. Um, it might con just contain basic scans. It might contain you know, animatics, pre-versions that the production has done. But essentially, it's your edit. Um, and if, as I said, if you're lucky, you'll receive an EDL. Um, and then editorial has to do something with this information. So what they can do now is just drag and drop onto this nice new window. I'll take my base layer, my QuickTime, and my EDL, and I'll drag and drop it onto this. So what it will do is it will then ask you to attach it to a project. So obviously you need to say, well, which project is this cut for? So I'll go ahead and choose my project. I'll then go ahead and say, what sequence is this cut for? Uh, it's very common in film to work on sequences, so you'll have a sequence cut. Perhaps if you're in TV, you might have commercials, so you might have a 30-second, a 60-second, and a 90-second cut. So the idea here is that I'm saying, okay, this is a sequence cut, uh, and I want to select the sequence that I'm attaching this cut to. You know, maybe if you're working in TV, you might have an episode cut, and you can obviously customize this to say, okay, I don't work in sequences, I work in episodes. Uh, so you can very much set that up as well. It's just to say, well, where is this cut coming from? So I'll choose the sequence, and now uh, this is a step that uh, is quite handy. Now, if, we, if this is a brand new cut, we can skip this step, but if we already have an existing cut in Shotgun, what this will do is it will compare it against the previous cut. Now, just taking a step back, another very common uh, process in editorial is that you'll 
will be sent updated cuts. And very often they won't send you uh, what's changed. They'll just dump you with a movie and say, here's the new cut, and you have to go through and you'll have to find out where all the cut points changed and things like that. Um, so if we can get an EDL from them, this will do it for us. So I'll say, okay, I want to compare it against version two. So this is my sequence. This is cut version two. And I want to import that into Shotgun. So what we're presented with next is a very nice uh, overview of what the cut is. So for example, across the top, this is a brand new cut. So it's saying, I'm just going to create a new cut with six shots. And it uses the information in the EDL to process that information. Now, I'm not going to go into the logic behind it. There is some very in-depth logic as to what it does, because there are different types of EDLs and things like that. We can get into that in the Q&A, but there is a, a series of steps, and we have documentation on all of this that it goes through to create these shots. So it's saying, I'm going to create a, a cut with six shots. It's also saying that one of the shots has been omitted because I'm comparing it against the previous shot, and that's fantastic. Instantly, I can see, okay, they've gone and dropped one of the shots from, uh, from the cut. Now, could be good, could be bad, but the idea is that uh, I need to be notified. We also have other options for things like cut changes. So this is saying six of your shots have had cut changes, and it goes ahead and this might look like a lot of numbers, um, but if you're an editorial, you know very well that you have a cut in, a cut out, you have a head in, a tail out, things like that. Um, but for those who don't, essentially, this is very important information for editorial. It'll also tell you things like if rescans are needed. So let's say the shot has been extended past the range that you actually have. You need to request extra scans from the production. And it does all of this by using the information in the EDL and comparing it against the previous EDL, which is fantastic. So here we are. Here's a nice little summary. It's saying that I've had some omitted shots and cuts that have changed and whatnot. Now, I can proceed to import this cut, in, uh, give it a description. It tells me what's changed. And then I can import that cut into Shotgun, and that's it. And now I can play it back in the browser, and it's gone ahead and created that cut for me. Now, there's probably a lot of questions at this point as to how it's doing what. We are going to get into that later on, but I'd just like to show you a high-level overview of what we're doing here. So let's move on. So for those of you who are using toolkits, we have three editorial toolkit applications uh, that we support, Flame, Hero, and Nuke Studio. And these have now been updated to support this new cut schema and cut workflow. So let's have a look. Now that my cut has been created, I can, from my media app, let's say this is where it becomes very helpful if, uh, if I'm an artist. So if I'm an artist, I'm just navigating through Shotgun and I'm looking at a version that I created. And here we go. This is a version that I rendered. What I want to do, which I wasn't able to do previously, is see it in cut context. Now, normally, if you're an artist, you have to wait until dailies, and then even then you have like a two-minute window to view your cut. You can't really see what other people are doing. Um, and especially if you're working across sequence, it becomes very important to uh, make sure that your, sort of your um, continuity is, uh, is on point. So what we have, uh, and if I jump back because I just skipped over the most important part. Let's try that again. Yes. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here we go. So I can open up a version, and you can't see it very well. I'll show you again in a minute. You, we have a little clapper icon in the bottom left. If I click on that, it will open up this cut tray that I showed you. So as an artist, I'm just looking at a version. But let's, even if I'm a supervisor, I can say, OK, this version is nice. Let's see what it looks like in context. Click on the clapper and it will use the latest cut information to play it in order. And there we go. So what I can do, I can say, okay, I just want a mini cut. Let's put one shot either side. Or let's put two shots either side. I don't want to load the whole cut. Uh, over on the right, we have the option to filter, um, filter versions out of the cut. So let's say, for example, oh, this looks great. Let's see what it it looks like with the latest animation versions, or I just want to see all of the latest comp versions. 
you know, maybe if you're an anim soup, you're just concerned with viewing the animation, so I can use that to filter out all of the other versions that I'm not interested in. And then, of course, you can filter by status, so let's look at this and cut context, yeah, cut context with all of the shots that are pending review, or I want to see it a final cut with all of the final versions. So these are just some basic options and the idea here is that it gives you access to look at different parts of the cut on the fly. This is not changing anything with the versions, it's simply using that cut to construct versions according to these filters. Final thing we have uh, on the bottom left is I can actually swap out any of these versions. So let's say I submitted this version, I'm viewing it in cut context, and I say, actually, I don't like that. I've just made a change that I don't like. So I'm going to right click, and I'm going to swap it out for a previous version. And this is great, because it lets me do this on the fly. It will, it, it, it's not going to write anything to that new cut. It's simply going to pop in an old version that I can view. Uh, of course, that cut is still going to contain the latest version according to the EDL, but I can go back and actually swap out versions on the fly which is really, really helpful. What I can also do is, uh, here it says Sattel 03, that's because I'm looking at the third version of the cut. I could actually click on that and go and look at another version of the cut. So let's say, okay, this shot's great. What's it look like in the trailer? I've got a 30 second trailer cut here, which I can just jump to, load that up, and then I can see my shot in a totally different context. And there we go. And again, I'm sure there's lots of questions at this point in terms of uh, how it's doing things, how it's doing what, and we will have plenty of time to cover those. Right. So the next thing we are looking at is uh, if I want to see things locally. Now we've been, the great thing is that I can do this in my browser. One of the, the difficult things with editorial is that you usually have to set up yourself up in a big screening room. If anyone as a production coordinator, you know how hard it is to round up supervisors and artists for dailies. It's an absolute nightmare. So it's great that we can do this in our browser, but of course there is times where we need to review the high-res images, the high-res content in a screening room environment. And we can do exactly the same thing using RV. So I'm going to take a version, and if those are familiar with the RV workflow, I can say play in RV, and it will load up the high-res content into RV uh, from my local file system. For those of you who don't know, RV is a uh, review tool that is bundled with Shotgun that lets you review high-res content. So the, uh, the cut tray is still there. We've got the notes uh, view on the right, so very similar to what we were seeing in the web. But the difference is, is that now we are using high-res local images. So these could be DPX frames, they could be EXRs, they could be a high-res QuickTime movie. Um, but now I'm looking at the high-res content. So uh, we've got a versions tab on the right where I can go and swap out previous versions. Uh, because we're using RV, we have more powerful tools that we don't have in the browser. So for example, I can compare side-by-side -side to a version versus its previous version. I can do wipes and comparisons to check what changes have been done and things like this. And this is all possible with the power of RV. Um, that isn't possible in the web interface. And again, we've got the same notes panel. I can take notes, I can give them, but the idea is that we're looking at this in cut context. Now, previously, in order to, if you'd uploaded a cut to Shotgun and you made a note on it, that note would be associated with the cut and you didn't know which shot it came from. But now, because we're in a proper cut context, I can view any shot I want, and whenever I give feedback, it's going to get sent to the correct shot. And this is really, really great. Right. What is this complicated diagram? So this is to say that the new cut features support um, what we call uh, an updated cut schema. Don't worry too much about the in and outs. The main reason that we talk about this is that we understand that our cut tools may not be as, um, they might not work for everyone's workflow. So what we've done is we've designed it in a way that if you have your own screening room, if you have your own you know, editorial ingest process, you can still use the cut features in Shotgun. So for example, instead of using our import cut app, 
you can have your own tool that digests an EDL and puts it into Shotgun. But the idea is that you can still review stuff in context. You still have a record of all of that information. And again, we're not going to get into this in too much detail, but the idea is that all of these tie into this new cut schema that we're using. Um, so we're quite proud that we're quite proud of it because then you're not just limited to using. Let's say you don't use RV, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can still use, <clears throat> you can still pull that information from Shotgun to construct and edit in your own application. So it sort of works both ways here. So this is a new cut schema that we uh, refer to, and we'll have a look at. Uh, what that is. <clears throat> so the final thing is just to say that uh, this is a version one of cut support. Uh, we are we are um, iterating on this. We are building new features. We do understand that there are some areas that are lacking at the moment. So for example, our import cut app can only import EDLs currently. They do not support other editorial formats like AFF, XML. This is something that we're building on. We're working on for future releases. So as you go through, and uh, if you would like to try out this cut workflow, we'd be very interested in hearing from you as to uh, what you would like to see, something that isn't working for you. Um, and we're going to keep building on it. So Shotgun RV7, as I said, came out uh, about I think two months ago. If you're a hosted client, it will already be on your site, and all of these features will be available to you uh, for no extra cost. And uh, if you are a local client, we have now released um, Shotgun 7 for local installs, so you can request an upgrade to Shotgun 7. Alrighty, so we are 20 minutes in. I would like to jump over to a site, and we can actually have a look at what this looks like. Just before I go any further, just to make sure that everything is still okay, still sounding good, everyone can still see my screen. I haven't dropped off and speaking to myself for the past 20 minutes. I'm going to take that as a yes. Excellent. All righty. <clears throat> so, First thing I'd like to draw your attention to is our support site. Now, some of you may have been here before, some of you may have not, uh, but if you haven't, I think it now is a good time to check it out because it has a lot of useful information on Shotgun 7. And that is support.shotgunsoftware.com. Uh, for those of you who don't, this is where we have all of our documentation. This is where you can submit requests, you can submit uh, help and support tickets through this site. Um, so I definitely recommend bookmarking it, support.shotgunsoftware.com. Now, we've got a nice banner here that says Shotgun RB7. Let's learn what this is about. So this will take you to a series of uh, pages that are dedicated to Shotgun 7. So you've got an overview, uh, some tips on how to get started, some sort of common questions and problems. But uh, you are going to want to look through these sections here. So importing a cut if you want to use the import cut tool. How do I browse them across Shotgun? How can I play them? The data model is very interesting for pipeline developers. If you're a pipeline developer and you want to know exactly what's happening under the hood, the data model is a very good place to start. So it looks exactly at how these cuts are constructed in Shotgun, how you can use your own tools to tie into these existing models. So it's quite in-depth. For most people, you won't really need to know this, but for the pipeline developers, they will be especially interested in how this works. So I'm not going to go into that in uh, too much detail. And then the final thing we have is uh, <clears throat> the FAQ, which answers some very common questions about cuts, um, some common misconceptions. Um, with cuts and Shotgun 7, we released a new package in RV called Shotgun Review, um, which is intended to sort of replace screening room. Uh, and a lot of people are sort of slightly confused by what's shotgun review, what's screening room, what's the difference between the two. So this all clears things up. You know, what is the difference between shotgun review, screening room? Uh, if you're having trouble launching RV using the new cut tools. So just some general questions if you get stuck along the way. I would definitely recommend you keep an eye on uh, this section. Uh, and any of the documents that you use here, so import and cut. Down on the left, you... Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Oops. Um, here we go. So let's say I'm looking at importing my cut. Everything that's tagged here as Shotgun 7 is all about, you know, 
these are all documents about the different parts of Shotgun 7. So it's all under review and approval, importing, browsing, data, and things like that. Great. Okay, so that's just to keep in mind. Let's actually have a look on a shotgun site. Alrighty, let's start from scratch. So for those of you who do know or might not have used it before, cuts can be accessed from your global media app, which was introduced in 6.3. Just pop over to my media page, and we now have a new item called cuts. Now browsers for looking at versions, playlist is obviously for looking at playlists, and now we have one called cuts. Let's start off by first looking at a single version. So I'm saying I'm looking in my Hyperspace Madness project on this sequence, and this is a version that I have rendered. So this is just playing a single version. <clears throat> this is nothing new, uh, but what is new, which uh, we couldn't show too well in the presentation, was this new little clapper icon. So let's say I'm a supervisor and I say, this is great, this shot looks great. Let's see what it looks like in the cut context. I can go ahead and open up this cuts tray and it is going to load the latest version of that cut. Now, I'm currently looking at a mini cut, which is two shots either side, so let's change that over to the entire cut. So there we go, it quickly loads up my shots, and now I am playing that entire cut in context, which is great. Now, this cut has been slightly modified to uh, have a lot of more shots than it should do. So let's actually take this shot, and let's make a little mini cut of one and one. And there we go. So that's a nice little section. I can say this was the original shot that I was viewing. I can look at the next shot and say, okay, you know, does the background look like it should in context? Uh, and all these sort of ch checks that just were a, bit, were a bit of a pain before because you would have to jump out and look at different versions and make sure that uh, you were looking at the right thing. Now down here, we've got the options that I showed you about filtering via pipeline steps. So I can say, for example, construct a cut with just animation versions. Or if I uh, am ready to view the final thing, I can construct one with comp, or I can do both. So let's say latest in pipeline. So that's just going to construct one with the latest versions. There we go. That is actually what we were just looking at. Again, on the right, I've got the ability to filter by version status. So I, let's construct a cut that is only showing me approved versions and whatnot. And then the final thing, as we saw, is uh, this is where I can jump to previous versions. So I'm looking at the 30-second trailer cut. Let's actually look at the full uh, saddle cut. So here we go. This is the one I was after. So this has got six shots in it. And there we go. So you'll notice that this sequence also tracks previous, we call them revisions. These are basically versions of the cut. So I'm, it will always load up the latest, the, the latest cut by default, but you can always jump back and look at older cuts using the newer content, if you so wish. And there we go. So that's from a version. Now, of course, I can actually go to my cuts tab. I can say, okay, let's go to Hyperspace Madness. This was the sequence I'm working on. And here it is, here is my latest, um, here is my latest cut. Play that, opens up my cuts tray, brings in all the shots, exactly as I was doing before. Now what you'll notice, which we really couldn't do before, if I open up my notes pane, before when we were looking at cuts in shotgun, if we made a note, it was gonna be associated with that cut, which was not very helpful, but now, Let's say, okay, I start off reviewing this shot, and then I move on to the next shot and say, oh, actually, now that I've got this shot, this next shot doesn't actually make sense. Let's say that this is not contextually correct. I can actually go in and submit a note, and the nice thing is that it will go and add it to the correct shot, whereas previously it would only store those notes on your entire cut. So this is a big leap forward in sort of quick contextual note taking. Um, can also lead to uh, people commenting on things they shouldn't, uh, which of course can be controlled via 
admissions. So there we go, we've got a note on the correct shot. I can go back and say, this is asking me to actually save my notes before I jump off, which is what I should be doing. This is not correct. I'm not gonna submit that for now. I'm gonna close that down. It's just saying, do you have notes that you don't wanna save? I do. Fantastic. So, one of the other things I can do is uh, take my cut and I can play in RV. Now, I don't have this site configured, but I've got a new one open. Here we go. So, this is the new uh, shotgun review package. If you are using RV7, what you will need to do is go into packages and make sure that you have shotgun review turned on. You will also want to make sure that you turn off the old shotgun integration and screening room for RV because these can um, they can cause some issues if you are if you are trying to use both at the same time. Now, if you're used to screening room, you might think, well, where is all of my other stuff from screening room? And that is an intentional move to essentially strip out a lot of the confusion that was created with screening room. I'll actually open up screening room to show you what it looks like and that's not to say that you cannot still use screening room you absolutely can um, it's just that shotgun review has been designed around a different workflow where you've already got a lot of that stuff in context and it's almost a very sort of minimalistic view where I'm just looking at my shot and I can you know view it in context whereas screening room has uh, some very you know big panels where I can uh, I can uh, do, 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 do so I can access a lot of stuff here I can open up my filtering on the right hand side and things like that and that's absolutely fine we can still use that it's just to say um, that shotgun review is a sort of more streamlined and slimmed down package now if you install shotgun 7 and rv7 fresh this will already be set up for you it's just for those who might be considering upgrading from shotgun 6 and uh, screening room for rv Alrighty, so let's take a quick look at some of the nerdy stuff. Hopefully we've got some nerdy people like myself on the line, uh, pipeline developers who are actually interested in what is going on under the hood in Shotgun. So this is going to be uh, for those who are sort of fairly used to Shotgun's interface. What we now have, if I go to a project, is two entities called Cuts and Cut Items. And these existed previously, but um, they weren't turned on by default and they weren't really used by any, anything. So let's have a look at some cuts in Shotgun. Now, here we can see the SAS or sequence cut that we were just looking at, and it's three revisions. So revisions is basically saying, what is the latest version of this cut? It will use this revisions field to always check, well, what is the latest version? I've also got my trailer cuts here. Uh, and I've got um, some other random cuts that have been created. Now, a cut can be linked to many things. It can be linked to a sequence. As I showed you previously, it could be linked to an episode. It could be linked to whatever you want. So you can define that here. And if you used the import cut app and you imported a, a reference, a quick time reference, it will actually create that as a version. It will create that as a version and this is just one long base layer. It's just one long base layer for your cut. The reason we have this is that let's say in a cut, you can account for non-VFX shots. If you don't have a shot that you're working on in shotgun, but you want it to appear in the cut, it will fall back to this base layer because you don't want to have to track non-VFX shots that you're not interested in in your shotgun site. And I promise the nerdiness is going to end in about two minutes. So bear with me here. Um, but let's jump into a cut, and a cut, well not this cut, let's jump into this one, has what we call cut items. And a cut item is basically, <clears throat> um, it's basically a, a, a version in a cut. So previously we used to store editorial information on shots, and you can still do this if you're using screening room and you want to do this. We still have things like cutting, cut out, cut duration, etc., on the shot. But the problem with this is that if this shot, let's say, uses frames 1001 to 1500 in the trailer, but in the actual show, 
it uses 1001 to 2000, then how do you track it? You can't because there's only one set of editorial information. Now that we're using cut items, a cut item is unique per cut, so we can track this information. We can say, okay, in this cut, Saddle version 2, the first shot, which is uh, this shot here, is being used from 1004 to 1017. But in the next cut, maybe we've extended it. Maybe it now uses 1004 to 1020. And we can track that. We can track it per cut. And this is what's really, really useful. So a cut item is linked to a shot and a version. If you're using the cut import, uh, the import cut app, it will populate a lot of this information for you. It has things like editorial information, like cutting, cutout. It also has time code in and out. And it uses this information if it needs to fall back to the base layer. So if we've got, let's say, we've got a cut item that isn't linked to a shot or a version, that's because it's a non-VFX shot. And it will use that time code to fall back to the base layer. So that's really, really handy. It's something that we couldn't do before either because we couldn't really account for non-VFX shots. All right, that is the end of the nerdiness. Uh, just a quick overview. This is uh, what this is, is this is what I was referring to as the shotgun schema. So the idea is that if you're using the import cut app, it will do this for you. But if you're not and you want to pass your own EDLs, your own editorial information, you can use this schema of cuts and cut items to actually play your cuts back in shotgun, even though you're not using the import cut app because, as I said, if you're using XML or AFS, you won't be able to use it with the import cut app at the moment. So this is a really great, great way that you can actually tie in your own editorial tools into Shotgun 7. Great. <clears throat> Alrighty. So that is the main feature set of Shotgun 7. Uh, as I said, it is very focused around a single feature set, which is cut support. Uh, in fact, the only other uh, <laughs> thing you'll, you will notice of Shotgun 7 is a uh, slightly uh, tweaked interface. And that is to uh, make things a bit more simple, make things a bit more uh, refreshed and nice. Um, but those are the main sort of feature sets of Shotgun 7. So it's a fairly, uh, it's fairly simple in terms of um, features, but what it's actually doing is it's solving a very sort of difficult issue that we had previously which is that we couldn't, edit, editors didn't have a good way to track um, cuts, they didn't have a good way to track editorial information, and if information changed, if cuts changed, uh, it was very difficult to keep track of that. They would have to, uh, I actually used to work in editorial myself, so first-hand experience, uh, and I'd be interested to know if there is any editors on the line, I'm sure you have a lot of questions about this. Um, you used to have to track um, cut changes in all sorts of different places if they were even nice enough to tell you about the cut changes. So now all you need is an EDL, you can import it into Shotgun, you can update that EDL and it will do a comparison for you. And it will do exactly the same thing if you are using some of our toolkit apps, so Nuke, Studio, Flame and Hero will all create cuts using this schema that we've just outlined here. Okay, so I know we have 20 minutes left, which is a bit longer uh, than I would normally do for Q&A, but because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of complicated questions, I would like to open the floor now for questions and answers. So I've got one question, which I can see from Sunith. Hello, hello. If cut durations are changed inside Shotgun, can we export the cuts back into an EDL? That is a very good question. So. Uh, what we were essentially looking at is uh, Shotgun is creating this cut information into uh, in Shotgun, and it's storing the editorial information on the cut item. So time code in, cut out, things like that. Cut item in, cut item out. <clears throat> now, if I were to change this information manually in Shotgun, what it would do is if I was playing that cut in Shotgun, it would respect those changes because it doesn't actually store the EDL anywhere in Shotgun. It simply uses it to create all the data in Shotgun, um, and it doesn't do anything with it. Now, what that means is if we do change this information, we don't currently have a tool that will export it out to an EDL. The reason behind that is that there isn't really an interface for editing this stuff. 
Uh, you can, of course, edit it manually, um, but because there's no sort of timeline editor, we don't really have a tool to then say, okay, export it back out to an EDL because we assume that people aren't going to be editing their cuts using this sort of manual interface. Uh, it's purely for sort of playing and importing. Now, having said that, there's no reason why you couldn't have a script that would take all of this data and pop out an EDL. Uh, it's something that we don't have at the moment, but if you're familiar with action menu items and scripting in Shotgun, you could very easily have a cut. You could have an action menu item that says create EDL, and it would go through and it would use all of the cut information in uh, that cut to then construct a formatted EDL. Uh, so the short answer is uh, no, we don't have a tool that will ex export it to an EDL, but it is possible uh, if you want to have that functionality. All righty. Awesome, awesome. Hope that helped. Uh, if you would like to talk to me more about how we can do that, um, feel free to hit me up on support afterwards, uh, and we can have a look at that for you. Alrighty. How fast is the shotgun in slow connections? Alrighty, so a bit of a more general shotgun question there. Um, I'm assuming if you're fairly new to shotgun, how does shotgun work? So just a bit of background history. Um, if we have got newer folks online, shotgun is a cloud hosted solution, so it does run in your browser. Um, the question is, how fast is shotgun in slow connections? Now. It's a bit of a tricky question to answer in that it really does depend on how slow we're talking about. What I can say is that um, the actual sort of bandwidth that's required to run Shotgun is very low. And it does depend what you're doing, but I'll give you an example, which is I actually work remotely. And when I work remotely, I am tethering off a 4G signal, which is not very high bandwidth, it's nowhere near the bandwidth I would get on a sort of Ethernet Wi-Fi connection, and uh, Shotgun is running absolutely fine. The reason being is that what we're doing in Shotgun a lot of the time is simply pulling metadata. We're not downloading or uploading huge files, we're simply loading and writing uh, metadata in Shotgun. So the actual bandwidth required for everyday usage of Shotgun is generally very low. So even on slow connections, it can still be it, 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 is still, uh, it still works very well. Uh, obviously, when we start going into uh, things like cuts and we are playing cuts back, this is buffering media. It is actually you know, buffering it from our servers. Now, even though these are H.264s, they're very optimized files. Um, of course, if you're running on a very, very slow connection, it might just take a little bit longer to actually buffer these in. You can see how the cuts uh, actually buffered. So it was a gray bar, which then quickly turned to a blue bar. And that means that it's actually it's, it's cached and I can play this back in my browser, no problem. If you're on a slow connection, it might take a little bit longer to do that. Um, but generally, you know, once it's buffered, you have no problem with playing that back. Alrighty. I hope that was, um, I hope that answered your question. Let's have another look. Alrighty. Hello again, Sunith. So, one more question. While importing the EDL, would there be a method to generate shots from the EDL info? <clears throat> yes, there is. So when you import the EDL, uh, so in your shotgun review, you go to uh, import cut. Uh, sorry, this is from RV. You have to, <clears throat> the import cut app is uh, launched through RV. So you would drag and drop your EDL. Now, um, I don't have, let me jump back to this slide here, which shows me the import cutout, because I'll show you which section I'm referring to. Do, 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 do. Alrighty, let's just make sure I'm on the right one. There we go. So I choose my cut, I go through, I select uh, which sequence I want. Now, if there are no shots already created in Shotgun, it will use the information in the EDL to create those shot names. Now, as I said, uh, if you want to know exactly what it's doing, I would recommend looking at the FAQ and the data model page because there's a whole series of steps that it goes through just because EDLs can be formatted quite differently. So off the top of my head, for example, I believe it uses clip names. 
if there are no clip names in the EDL, it can fall back on things like avid markers, things like that. So there are different ways that it does it. Um, but I mean, if you don't, if you aren't happy with what it's picked up, let's say you have a custom shop code that isn't actually in the EDL, during the import, you can very quickly just actually go through and change these. Um, this isn't set. Uh, it, it's not like saying that you have to use what's in the EDL. When you summarize the EDL before you import it, you can actually go through and change those. So you can change the shop name so it will create brand new shops according to whatever um, uh, naming convention you want. Um, but yes, what I would definitely recommend is having a look through, because uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, the do, 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 under shotgun seven the data model, um, and I think this one here, import cut in depth. It basically goes through a whole bunch of uh, of the logic as to what it's using for the clip names. If it doesn't have a clip name, what it will do. If the version doesn't exist in shotgun, what will it do? Um, so that should hopefully answer your questions there. But uh, you can also edit that in the uh, summary before you import cuts. Alrighty. Hope that answers. And again, uh, any other follow-up, you can always hit me up offline. Great. Alrighty, non-cuts. When can we expect an Android app for Shotgun? <laughs> oh, the good old Android app question. So. A bit of background on this, um, for those who don't know, we do have a iPhone application called Shotgun Review. It is unfortunately specific to iPhone at the moment, and it is primarily uh, it is based around reviewing content on your iPhone. It doesn't give you access to the Shotgun site. Um, we don't have any application at the moment that is designed to be a tablet version of browsing the uh, Shotgun interface. The applications that we do have on mobile are just based around review, and unfortunately it is on iPhone. Uh, we don't have an immediate plan to release an Android version. The reason for that is that we actually want to update the uh, iPhone version and get it into, add more functionality to, to it first before we then tackle an Android version. So it's, it's definitely a very popular request. We've had a lot of people ask for it, um, but unfortunately we don't have uh, an estimated um, time for it at the moment. What I will say for Android users is anyone who is familiar with our client review site, and our client review site is um, a way to share content with those outside of your shotgun site, the client review site will run in mobile browsers on Android and on iPhone. So if you want to share versions outside with someone who's specifically on an Android device, you can actually use the client review site and you can open that link in an Android mobile browser. It's not a specific application for Android, but it will allow you to review content on Android phones. Alrighty. So, next question. What is the main difference between Hero and Shotgun? <coughs> Alrighty, so let's have another quick look at this. Um, so Hero is actually a, uh, a Foundry product. It's a editorial. <laughs> it's an editorial product that is made by the Foundry, and um, that is for um, making and reviewing cuts. Uh, they recently expanded it to Nuke Studio, to which we have integration as well. Um, but the idea, if you're using Hero in your workflow, is that you are creating and you know updating your edits in Hero. Now, the workflow when you create that edit, you want to be able to publish it to Shotgun. The reason for that is you want to you want to track the edits. You want to be able to see everything that we just looked at with Shotgun Seven. Uh, the first step would be to publish out of Hero. Um, so it could be Hero, it could be Flame, it could be Nuke Studio. Um, but the idea is that these would basically replace the import cut app. The import cut app is designed for those who are using tools like Final Cut Pro, Avid, Adobe Premiere, where we don't have integrations for them, but you can take the output from those tools and use it with our import cut app. The, the sort of aim here is that we don't want to have to create integrations for every single editorial tool out there, because there are a lot. We would rather create a tool that passes all of the common outputs um, so that it, it basically can be used by more people. So Hero is like this, one of the ways that if you do uh, track things in Hero, <clears throat> you do have your edits in Hero, you can publish to Shotgun, 
You could do exactly the same with Mixer Studio or Flame. Or if you're not using Toolkit and you are using Hero, you can actually just export an EDL from Hero and then import it using the free import cutout that comes with RV. So hopefully that shines a bit of context on uh, what you do, not just with Hero, but other editorial tools as well. All right, got some more questions, amazing. Feel free to chime in with any non-Shotgun 7 questions as well if this is the first time seeing Shotgun which I think there is, because we've got a question saying, is there any trial of shotgun? And the answer is yes. That's a very good question for any newcomers here. If you go to shotgunsoftware.com, it's my favorite site. You can get a nice overview of shotgun, but at the top right, you've got a nice button saying start your free trial. So what you can do, if you've never used Shotgun before, you can come here, shotgunsoftware.com slash sign up. This will give you a free 30-day trial, which <clears throat> you will have full access to a fully functional Shotgun site. There are no limitations on the trial, other than obviously the time limit. All of the functionality is available to you. You can create accounts for your teams, yourself, and you have the option to try out any of the integration that you've just seen. There is no limits on uh, what you can access in the trial. So if you do want to try out cuts, you can try out cuts by just signing up for a trial. So again, shotgunsoftware.com slash sign up. You simply put, uh, put in your uh, information. No payment information is, is required until, uh, until you've gone through the trial. So you can get that set up straight away. They spin it up within, um, I think it's an hour. You can have a site up and running uh, and you can try this stuff out. All righty. So let's have a look. Okay, I'm at the bottom of my question list. Uh, any other sort of generic shotgun questions, not just shotgun seven? Uh, we do have a couple of minutes left, which we can definitely use to uh, plow through any other shotgun questions. Alrighty, all quiet, no worries, form pops up. <clears throat> so let's recap then. Uh, what we've looked at today is a um, quick look at some of the new features that were in Shotgun 6.3, but more importantly, we spent our time looking at <coughs> Shotgun 7. So the new feature set from Shotgun are based around cut support. Again, if you want to have a look into it, I would recommend going to support.shotgunsoftware.com and diving into the Shotgun 7 question, uh, sorry, section that will give you a nice overview of everything that's in Shotgun 7. Just got another question that came in. How secure is Shotgun? How secure is Shotgun? Alrighty, that could, we could go on for a long time. Uh, obviously, being a hosted solution, <coughs> we adhere to a whole bunch of security standards. There are different ways that you can enhance shotgun security. We have feature sets like two-factor authentication. Everyone obviously has a unique and uh, restricted login. We have the option for on our higher support levels to do things like IP whitelisting, which allows you to lock down um, allows you to lock down shotgun to specific IPs in your studio. What I would definitely suggest is having a look at shotgunsoftware.com slash privacy as this basically has a whole bunch of T's and C's in terms of security. It gives you all of the information, um, the uh, security standards. It's a long and very boring document, um, but obviously one that is very useful and it should have all of the information in there to answer any security concerns. Uh, if not, uh, and I was just about to come on to this, uh, if you ever want to get in touch with us about uh, questions, so if you need more security information, you can from the support site, you can submit a new request, or you can actually just email uh, support at shotgunsoftware.com and we will get back to you with any, any questions, concerns. Even if you're on the trial, our support is still there to help you. Um, so throughout your trial, feel free to get in touch. Um, but yes, I would say check out shotgunsoftware.com slash privacy uh, and anything else that's not clear on there, do have uh, do get in touch. You can also do a search on our site for security, and I spelled that wrong, so don't spell it like that. 
security. We've got some nice articles that a lot more of the security procedures. So what is our infrastructure, all of the different things that we have, and again, scrolling through a long and very boring text document, but one that is uh, very useful. All righty. I'm liking, I'm liking these shotgun questions, sort of <clears throat> opening up to anyone who's new to shotgun. We've got one more question, which I think we'll have time to answer, which is, can we render out shotgun files with review comments from shotgun? Uh, yes. So unfortunately, we didn't have time to get into this today. Um, we actually have, if, if you are new to shotgun, we have a whole feature set that is based around review and approval. What I would suggest doing is uh, going to <clears throat> under our user guide. So you would go to guides and shotgun. And I would definitely suggest checking out the review and approval section. So this is all to do with how we play back media in shotgun. Um, one of the things that you saw me do in, in uh, uh, let's jump to a version. One of the things you saw me do <coughs> in Shotgun is actually annotate on frames. So for example, if I'm giving some visual feedback, I can annotate, I can write some comments and say this needs to be fixed. Um, it goes into this whole, this whole workflow that we have in Shotgun of annotating and reviewing versions, uh, giving feedback, and that all sort of goes back into uh, the Shotgun infrastructure. It gets sent back to your artists. We have things like, uh, that's my detail pane. So here we go. We have the option to add notes. We can see feedback. And unfortunately, I wish we did, but I don't think we have time to actually go through because that is a whole other different topic. So what I would suggest is shotgun software uh, support dot shot there support dot shotgun software and have a look under review and approval. This talks through all of our um, review processes. And of course, do hit me up afterwards if you want to discuss it in more detail. Uh, do, 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 do. Alrighty, so I've got a question here, how to make completed episodes visibility off in a task page? Alright, let's do that since we have time. Uh, so this is a very, this is a very specific request, so uh, if anyone is uh, confused by this, don't worry. Uh, do, 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 do. The answer was, how can we filter by uh, an episode's visibility. So just very quickly, just so if uh, other people are sort of understand what's happening, obviously Shotgun is task-based. We have things like shots, episodes, uh, they're all sort of linked together. Um, I'm just very quickly going to show. Um, so don't worry if you don't understand this, but for the ones who did ask the question, you will understand this. Um, if I have a task and I want to do something based on what it's linked to, so for example, a task is linked to an asset, I can click here and I would go down to link fields. I'm using the link field so I can go through link, <coughs> assets, and status. So that is the status of the asset that the task is linked to. Now you can do that in filtering as well. So let's say, for example, I want to create a filter where, and again, let's go back down to link. I'm looking at assets. Let's say I want to create a filter that shows me all of the tasks from the assets that are in progress. And there we go. So what I think you're looking for is you need to go through uh, li this linked fields option. You can do it in the filter panel. You can add fields on here. So what you would do, you would go through, you, your setup would probably be something like link, shot, um, and then perhaps episodes, if you have episodes. <clears throat> but you can sort of go through it like this. This is a very <laughs> sort of more complex example of shotgun. So by all means, um, I know who asked that question. You can hit me up afterwards, and we can actually go through that. All righty. And that brings us to the hour. So finishing off a nice little complex way to scare people away from shotgun. I hope not. Um, but yes, we can follow up on that for sure. Um, but for everyone else, uh, unless uh, there are any other questions, let's open it up for one more minute, see if we've got anyone else. Anyone else got any questions? Great. Alrighty, guys. Bang on time. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming.
This is, uh, again, my name's Andrew Lance, um, Shotgun Support in uh, London, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I don't know if I closed down this meeting or if someone else does that, but thank you very much, and speak to you all on the support forums. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the webinar. For any additional queries, please write us on register at adconnect.in. Have a great day ahead.